for me in the morning. <laughs> the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Peru, the Chairperson of the Steering Committee of the World Movement for Democracy, Honorable Kim Campbell, the larger members of the Steering Committee of the World Movement for Democracy, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, it is indeed my great pleasure to humbly stand before you tonight. Traditionally, I would have been very afraid and intimidated to be standing before you today, noting all that the vast majority of you are adults and of renowned portfolios, and I being a youth and a young woman to be precise. However, because I have come to appreciate what it entails to embrace the very notion of democracy in its inclusiveness, nature, and context, I am humbly, sorry, I am humbled to be part of this platform of the Seventh Assembly, representing the younger generation. As I stand here, I will share a testimony that democracy is not a far-fetched concept that only speaks to the elite and the socially privileged but that embracing democracy signals liberation, freedom, and dignity, more importantly, for the undermined, the disadvantaged, the oppressed, the unrecognized, and the minorities. It is my pleasure to share my personal story as a young woman who was born and grew up in the rural communal lands of Mashonaland and Central Province of Zimbabwe. My family, like other peers and families, relying on subsistence farming, struggled to fund my education. And although they tried hard, it was not easy, with society dictating that the girl child is not worth investing in. And religion made it worse, because there were some church doctrines that emphasized that the girl child has no right. He has no right to choice, but should only be recognized as subjects of their husbands. By the time I reached university level, my parents had succumbed to societal demands and realities, and I was left alone to find myself menial jobs during vacations for my self-sustenance and ultimately to finance my education after the government removed the grant system to university students in 2006. While I celebrated that I was successfully laying a strong foundation for my future and a decent life ahead, in the eyes of society, including church and even close relatives, I was being a rebellious girl child. I was defying societal norms, religious norms, and as such I was not a normal girl child. Questions like, if she is a normal girl child, like other obedient and respectful girls in this community, why does she want to be more educated than boys and young men here? What will she use the education for? And which men would want to marry such an educated woman? <laughs> but for me, it was such sentiments that gave me more strength to soldier on, more power and courage to fight for the rights of girls and young women in my community. So in university, I joined the Rep uh, Students' Representative Council, and I was the only female in the council. Due to high levels of polarization, polarization that prevailed in the country and more specifically in Mashonal and Central Province where the university was located. I saw myself in police uh, incarceration not only once but several times. My charge fighting for and representing students rights. Even though people close to me called me a jailbird, I had a deep conviction that I was the norm only normal person there and I was fighting for the right cause, the right to education, and the rights of girls and young women in a free Zimbabwe. So no arrests, no intimidation, or threats of abductions could stop me. As I did my voluntary work, and subsequently as the founding gender and women's rights officer at Youth Forum, from 2008 up to 2009, I felt that I was a bit restricted in not doing enough to fulfill my vision of fighting for the rights of my fellow sisters in marginalized communities to include rural, farming and mining. The majority of these young women could not see the door of a classroom. The majority of them were married off as young as the age of 12 because religion allowed it. 
The majority of them were born in abject poverty, knew only of poverty, and never believed that there can be another life outside their confines. The majority of them contented to violence against women, even after the country had passed an anti-domestic violence law. The majority of them despised and labeled other girls and young women because they were going outside the societal dictates and boundaries and were pursuing their status. So in 2009, I resigned from Youth Forum, went back to Mashonal and Central Province, and started organizing young women under the Initiative Institute for Young Women Development, which is the organization I am representing today. The organization works to promote sustainable livelihoods among young women in poor communities and to encourage them to send their girl children to school, to educate these young women also of their human rights, to encourage these young women to be, in political, to be political actors, because I personally believe that things happen in politics, and finally to teach them to read and to write. Our strategy as an organization is to target community leaders particularly traditional leaders, because they are the custodians and gatekeepers of culture and some of its harmful cultural practices to girls and also to young women. But above all, they are also opinion makers in these communities. This strategy has largely worked to gain us acceptance in the polarized communities of the province. I have profound gratitude to the World Youth Movement for Democracy as it has provided me with an opportunity to grow beyond my own vision of fighting for democracy through a gender lens. Their activist seminars, specifically the Cape to Cairo conference, which was held in South Africa in February of this year, added value to my work, to my passion, and to my beliefs. It gave me an opportunity to interact with other young people and seasoned activists from various countries, across the globe, hence broadened my ability to influence even younger men. The follow-up Zimbabwe Youth Civil Society Conference, which we held in Zimbabwe in June under the World Youth Movement for Democracy, led to youth activists and including activists and representatives from various organizations agreeing to focus on building a vibrant movement to fight the country's common, common enemy, which is autocracy, before we start talking about other pertinent issues, such as national development. This platform for movement building, which, wa which was agreed to, is the Organizing for Zimbabwe initiative, which I totally subscribe to and presents me with another opportunity to fight with all other sectors in the country, to fight for a democratic Zimbabwe where there is social justice and everyone is deemed equal, regardless of their age, their gender, geographical orientation, spiritual beliefs, among other natural differences. This initiative aims to help build a robust movement led by young people to champion objective activism and lead the unlocking of a democratic transition in Zimbabwe. So as we gather here tonight and engage in the discourse of democracy around the globe, let us all remember that we are in a struggle that will not only see us as activists, as social workers, and development strategists celebrating realization of our dreams, but a struggle that will incredibly and sustainably transform the lives of the usually downtrodden, the marginalized, in the socially vulnerable groups, most of whom I represent today, the girl child, the young, and the women, the women in general. I want to conclude by a quote from the former U.S. Ambassador to Zimbabwe, Ambassador Charles Ray, that where you come from matters less than where you are going. It is the struggle that lies ahead of us. In my country, Zimbabwe, Aluta continua Venezuela, Belarus, Syria, Cuba, Kazakhstan, what Egypt and Tunisia are still to realize, among other democratically challenged countries, that we should think of and act on. 
your struggles are our struggles too. It is with much hope and appreciation that I am here today among other Zimbabwean delegates here present that this assembly will provide me with lessons from best practices in the fight for democracy, uplift my energies, and continue to inspire me in fighting for a democratic Zimbabwe, especially as my country prepares for a constitutional referendum and an election in the near future. I want to thank the World Movement for Democracy and the World Youth Movement for Democracy for the support that they are rendering to Zimbabwe. Your efforts for a democratic Zimbabwe, better for all Zimbabweans, will definitely not go unnoticed and unmentioned. I thank you all.